Have you noticed your photos look too blue or too yellow? This means your white balance is off. In this video, I'm teaching you what white balance is and what settings to use to get the perfect photo every time. Hey there, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Chris. I'm teaching you photography and how to start a creative business. I'm posting videos three times a week, so subscribe to stay notified. In this video, I'm teaching you all about white balance and how to use it to your advantage. What is white balance? We know that your camera sensor captures photos a little different than how you see the world. All around us, there are different sources of light. The sun, indoor lighting, street lamps, and photo and video lights. All of these unique light sources have a unique color temperature associated with them. You may have noticed that fluorescent office lighting looks harsh and sterile, while your bedroom lighting looks warm and inviting. This is due to the different light coming out of the different bulbs. Our eyes do a really good job of adjusting our vision so that everything looks pretty much the same color. Cameras, on the other hand, work differently. If you didn't adjust your white balance and took a picture of that office scene, it would look really blue. If you took a photo of your bedroom, it would look really yellow. You have to tell the camera how you want it to adjust for white balance. Do you want to set it to auto white balance? Do you want to set it to a specific number? Well, today I'm here to teach you how to master white balance. Why is white balance important? Well, you want an accurate photo. Getting the white balance right in a photo is really important. You want to capture the scene accurately. If you're taking a portrait of someone, you want to make sure that the white balance is correct so that their skin tone is accurate. If you're doing food photography, you want to make sure that the color of the food is appealing. No one wants to eat a blue chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> Luckily for you, getting this right is pretty easy. Your camera has a lot of settings for white balance. There's auto white balance, custom, sunny, cloudy, indoor, even underwater. I'm here to tell you, you only need to understand two of these. Auto white balance is most likely what you're gonna end up using. Cameras are really good at getting this right by themselves. This mode is super simple and you pretty much set it and forget about it. I use this when I'm capturing anything lit by natural light. This could be landscapes, cityscapes, portraits in the sun, you name it. Auto white balance is gonna do a good job most of the time. What happens when auto white balance fails? Well, if you're shooting raw, you're in luck. You can change the white balance in Lightroom or your editing software of choice. As long as you're shooting raw, you'll be able to change the white balance while editing without losing any image quality. Let's take this photo for example. This was shot at 5600 K Calvin, but something doesn't look right. This image looks really blue, so let's warm it up a bit. We're going to drag the temperature slider to the right and make it warmer. I think this looks a lot better than the blue photo we had before. This feature of shooting in RAW is huge. I still like having my camera shoot on auto white balance just so I can quickly glance at my photos on my camera screen, but having the ability to adjust it if I need to in the edit is so powerful. The other option you can use is custom white balance. Here, you set a number that corresponds to the temperature of the light of your scene. Why would you use this over auto white balance? If you're working with artificial lighting, this is fantastic. Artificial photo and video lights will have a temperature associated with them. This scene that you're looking at right now is lit by one big light on this side of my face. I know that this light is 5600 Kelvin, so that's the temperature I would set on my camera. By setting this on my camera, I know that the photo and video that is coming out will be the perfect white balance. When you're shooting video, you want to use a custom white balance so that your camera doesn't have to guess. Unlike photography, your videos aren't in a raw format, so it's really hard to change the white balance when you're editing. You're going to lose video quality if you try and change this in your editing process. A quick tip if you're using artificial lighting, you need to make sure that the lights that you're using are all the same white balance. I'm using this big light on my face here at 5600 Kelvin, but if I turn on the ceiling lights, they would have a warmer color temp. Since my camera is calibrated for the main light, the new ceiling lights would cast a yellow hue all over the image. Now you're having two different lights lighting different areas of the image and competing with one another. You can't balance for both so you're going to end up with this weird color. If you're using artificial light, make sure it's all the same color temperature. Okay, so what have we learned? Auto white balance for photography is usually the way to go. Your camera can guess the white balance pretty well so you can pretty much stick with this setting. Even if your camera gets this wrong, you can adjust it in Lightroom later on. Custom white balance is great for video and if you're using artificial light. By knowing the the temperature of the artificial light, you can easily set the white balance on your camera. And that's white balance in a nutshell. I appreciate you watching. I think it's awesome that you're trying to get better at photography and learn more. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel and allows me to make more of these. I want to say hi to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. I'll see you all in the next one.